Okay, welcome everyone to this last day of SDLC 2021. Uh, it's uh, my pleasure to uh, host the first uh, keynote speaker of today and uh, the chair of this session is Mehrtat Sadatnan. So without further ado, I hand over the word to Mehrtat. And before that, I thank our, all our sponsors. So the gold sponsors are BT, British Telecom, Robert Bosch and Pure Systems, and our uh, silver sponsors are Elsevier and Metacase, and we have the support of ACM and uh, Sigsoft, thanks to all of them, and Merda, the word is yours. Yeah, thanks. So welcome, everyone, and uh, we are very happy to have Matthias Nibari from Escania. Apologies, Merda, your voice yes. is a bit soft, if you don't mean, yes. if you don't mind speaking up a little bit, that would be... Yeah, so uh, welcome everyone. We are very happy to have Matthias Nibari from uh, Scania today uh, with us. And uh, the title of uh, this keynote uh, is Generating Safety Cases for Larger Scale Industrial Product Lines. And uh, without further ado, I would like to uh, ask uh, Matthias to start, uh, maybe by introducing himself and saying a couple of words about his background and his experiences from industry, and then we uh dive into the technical aspect of this keynote speech uh, so thanks uh, and uh, matthias please start uh, okay uh, thank you uh, i will first would like to thank you also for inviting me uh, to give this uh, keynote speech here today uh, myself i'm living in stockholm sweden and uh, the title is, as was said, they're generating safety cases for large scale industrial product lines. Uh, I'm trying to change slide now. Doesn't work. And I have some technical problems here. <laughs> We do see your mouse moving, so I don't think the computer has crashed. All right. Yeah. No, no, it's not full screen anymore. I try it again. Okay, now it works. So uh, I am. I have uh, two jobs. My main uh, affiliation is uh, at the heavy vehicle manufacturer Scania. There, I am a technical manager of. Uh, functional safety and I'm responsible for methods and tools to achieve functional safety uh, but also I have another job I'm uh, at uh, KTH Royal Institute of Technology in Stockholm where I am an adjunct professor in Vandable control systems in the division of mechatronics and embedded control systems I'm leading their uh, research group in rigorous systems engineering uh, First, I have this slide to give you some introduction to the company, Scania. Uh, it was founded 1891. It's a, nowadays a part of the Volkswagen Group, and the main products are heavy trucks and heavy buses. We have worldwide production and sales, with 50,000 employees in total, 5,000 engineers, and of these, uh, at least 2,000 in the area of electronics and software. We sell around 100,000 vehicles per year. Uh, and that uh, means, or this has resulted in that we have in operation now more than 1 million vehicles, of which 400,000 at least are connected, and this is growing. Uh, my talk today uh, will uh is given from the my own context of the scania but i i'm trying to talk from a more general perspective uh, but my industrial context here is the scania evolving product line and i will discuss how to create assurance cases for such product lines in a particular how to generate such assurance cases uh, automatically and then how we can do this from the requirements breakdowns. And a large part of my talk will be about, about the industrialization of, of this. 
So it's not only a theory, but also how can this be done in industry? And, uh, and in that sense, it reflects both the current development regarding this at Scania, but also what has happened the last seven years regarding experience and uh, co collaboration on this topic between Scania and KTH. Uh, so to give you the, my context here, I have some slides about the Scania and its products. Uh, so at Scania, we, we basically have one uh, product. It's a truck, but it comes in many, and many here is mil billions of variants. So we consider bus to be, uh, and here we have a bus. That's for us a variant of a truck, more or less. And here you see a variety of different uh, vehicles that we can produce from the same uh, product line. Uh, I said that we produce 100,000 vehicles per year. Almost every one of these vehicles is uh, unique. So that means we need to deal with, we need to produce 100,000 uh, unique variants per year. Uh, my main area is the electronic, electrical systems of, of uh, Scania vehicles, meaning electronics and software. You can say in a Scania truck, we have between 20 and 50 ECUs. ECUs mean electronic control units. Uh, and if you compare this with the passing car, business, there they, use, they may ha have up to 150 issues. So that means we have less, but I think we have, in fact, more functionality in trucks because trucks are more a more complex product. Uh, so we have more in each issue, we have more uh, functionality uh, and also more variability. Here is two pictures of different issues we have, and they are placed all over the vehicle. Uh, one example is the issue for the engine control system. And as you see here, it's mounted directly on the engine block. Means That means it needs to uh, withstand uh, vibrations and uh, the heat. And this is general for trucks. It's, it's a more rough, in general, more rough environment for all the electronics. And, and the life length of a truck is uh, much longer than a normal passenger car. In the automotive business, uh, and uh, we have the, the following trends. Elect electrification is, I would say, the biggest one right now. Also autonomous driving and the idea to sell transport solutions instead of only vehicles. Uh, this results in an increased in complexity of the, our products uh, and our organization also, I would say. It also results in more safety critical systems and applications. We also have a strong focus right now on cyber security due to new regulations in that area. At the same time, there is a an ambition to be faster and more efficient in everything we do. So therefore, there is a lot of activities around agile development and continuous integration, for example. Uh, if we look more into the our product line, we can uh, note that this is an old thing at Scania. This uh, is a photo of a newspaper article from 1948. There it is written that uh, this is in Swedish, but if we translate and summarize, what's stated here is that individual variants were built from standardized components and there were no model years. So they had the product line already at, at this year. So this is uh, uh, part of Scania philosophy from a long time ago that we, we build things within a product line and we don't have model years and uh, no particular 
types of uh, Scania vehicles. Everything is made, uh, or most trucks are produced from custom orders, customer orders. Uh, to make this possible, we have since long the so-called Scania modular system. It includes both the mechanical part, as you see here, and, and the electrical part, including the software. And, and these parts are combined uh, to form all the different uh, kind of products we have. And uh, it's the, the product line is also evolving, and we have as I said, one evolving product line. Uh, what it means is that every week things are allowed to change. So uh, instead of model years, we can think of that we have model weeks. So there is some change to our product line that happens every week. Uh, regarding features, uh, we have tens of thousands of features of which around 1,000 are customer features that are chosen by the customer. We have uh, constraints in the form of feature diagram and explicit constraints. For example, a vehicle can only have one engine. If a strong engine is chosen, then a strong gearbox must be chosen. Uh, and the reason why there is a difference between the number of, total number of, of features and the customer feature is that we generate a lot of uh, added production features from the customer features. For example, if the customer chooses a diesel engine, then a particle filter feature is automatically added, even though the customer is not really, might not really be interested in that. Uh, and our product line is built up by parts. And these are small things like a screw or a cogwheel or a single software component. And they are never big things. So we don't, uh, and for example, an engine is not a part. Uh, so, so the product line is formed on a very low level with tens, tens of thousands of parts. Each part then have a product number. Here you see an issue with, sorry, it says part number. You see the part number here of this issue. And then each part has a presence condition, and this is stored in our product data management system, which we call WAS. Uh, this is the how it works. The customer selects between 1,000 features. It is then transformed in several steps, um, and then there is a uh, constraint checker here. If uh, as I said, we add also production features and also the time of production. Uh, if there is a problem detected during a constraint checking, then we notify the customer that has to be, then has to modify his uh, order. Uh, and then uh, when, before we, we reach production, we create the, uh, kind of DNA for the vehicle, which contains all the production features and the time of production. And then this results in a list a production order, which is a list of parts of assembly in production, plus the calibration values for all the software. Uh, as I said, we have a uh, presence conditions for each part and the, they are in this form of uh, logical formulas. And this, for example, this one means that the part is present if and only if features A, A1A A and 73B uh, are selected and the vehicle is produced after week 36 of year 2012. Uh, since it's a, an evolving product line, uh, the person's conditions uh, are allowed to change. So when we decide that one part is no longer used, we, we might add uh, and this red part to, uh, to the present condition telling after week 12, 2017, this uh, present condition evaluate to false. And that also, we can use this also to uh, uh, note that parts are used, used in new variants like this. 
Now to the assurance case. Uh, I'm, the title talks about safety case, but safety case is just an example, a particular case, uh, example of an assurance case. So an assurance case is a structured argument supported by evidence intended to justify that the system is acceptably assured relative to a concern in the intended operating environment. Uh, and the typical concerns of interest are safety and cybersecurity. Uh, and of course, there might be other concerns also, but this is uh, the focus at, at Scania, these two kind of uh, concerns, and then we call it the safety case or the cyber security case. Uh, and such assurance cases are important since they are required by safety and cyber security uh, standards. And but not only that, because even if it's if it would not be required by the standards, uh, I think it it is. Uh, and maybe the only holistic, systematic, reasonably established industrial practice to conclude if a product is safe, uh, secure, or not. Uh, usually, these uh, insurance cases are uh, visualized in diagrams. Here you see one kind of notation where we have uh, the claims. And the claim might be on the top that the vehicle is safe. And then we have subclaims. We have arguments uh, that argues uh, why the claim holds and evidence that supports the argument. The, there is a maybe more well-known notation called GSN. Uh, you'll start the notation. It looks like this, but the, the idea is principal idea is the same. And uh, it has been. Uh, noted in uh, in industry and in literature that this is not as simple as it might look like there are problems and according to these papers here there are problems in every aspect of assurance cases to build them review them maintain them and reuse them and i tend to agree with this uh, and the reason for this is that the the volume of material the size and little structuring support and, and ad hoc usage of uh, all kinds of things, including evidence. And this is actually what I try to address in this talk uh, in the following slides done. But first, we, we can, I would like to discuss what kind of assurance case uh, we want. Uh, we can build an assurance case per uh, variant. And in the Scanner case, would mean that we need them to to create 100,000, uh, if you now talk about safety, 100,000 safety cases per year, one for each produced Scania vehicle. I think this is a desirable thing to have because you want to know when you produce the vehicles, you want to know uh, why is this particular vehicle safe? And if there is some feed problems, you want to go back and see what the reasoning uh, uh, for that particular vehicle was. Uh, well, we could also think of creating one, one assurance case uh, for all the variants that we could possibly produce. Uh, and someone told me that it's possible to produce 10 raised to 65 different uh, uh, variants per year. So that would mean we need to create uh, 10 raised to 65 safety cases per year, which would not, of course, be possible. Uh, but we need something more than only at, at the time of production. We, we have this uh, safety case per variant, but we need something more. And we, we then try to build assurance cases for the whole product line. And why we need this is the reason is that during development, engineers want to be notice, notified as early as possible if there is a problem with the. Uh, vehicles with respect to safety or uh, cybersecurity. It's too late to get to know this when you, when you start to produce the vehicles. Uh, and for example, before the start of sale, we, we, we like to know if there are variants that are not safe. And in that case, we would like to exclude them from the 
uh, configurator by adding some constraints. Uh, now I will explain how we can systematically derive SORS cases from the requirements breakdown. I will present this in the context of the functional safety standard ISO 26262. Uh, the purpose of this standard is that function uh, to ensure that function implemented by electronics and software are safe. And this is an example of a standard that requires uh, safety cases. The core idea here uh, is that on the top we have uh, hazards that are identified uh, dangerous things of, of the product, of the vehicle in our case. Uh, for example, a hazard could be that when, when the uh, brake pedal is pressed, the vehicle is not braking. That's, that's a hazard. Uh, and then we have requirements that aim to mitigate these hazards. So in, in this example, it could be that the requirement is that when I press the uh, braking pedal, the vehicle uh, shall brake. Then there is refinements. We have a lower level requirements, and then that could be uh, uh, iterated several times until we reach down to the implementation level. And there we have then basic software and hardware elements that are supposed to implement the lowest levels requirement. You can, as an example here, we see a bigger element composed of smaller elements, and then the, the requirements refinement follow this architecture. Uh, so if we have such an architecture and this kind of requirements break down, we can conclude that if requirement R1 mitigates hazard one, this is re this relation here, and requirement R2 refines requirement R1, this is this relation, and Lastly, if element E2 implements requirement R2, which is the bottom thing here, then the system is safe with respect to hazard one. Uh, this we can translate to a safety case uh, with the claim that our system is safe with respect to hazard H1, with the, the arguments being this uh, relationship in the requirement breakdown. Uh, to complete the safety case, we also need to add the, the evidence. For example, an evidence for that R1 mitigates has to H1 is that it has uh, an independent review has been done. Or for the refinement or requirements, there has been some SEMA formal analysis of that. For the implementation relation, there has been some simulation and high coverage testing. This kind of safety case can, of course, be visualized in a GSN diagram, Then it looks like this. It's the same information, but just organized in, in a diagram. Uh, now, you want to generalize this to product lines. So if you have a product line, uh, Instead of claiming now that the system is safe, we want to say that the whole product line is safe, meaning every single product in the product line that can be produced is safe. Uh, so the claim is the product line is safe with respect to the hazard H1. The arguments are the same, but we now have, in this case, it's a simple case, we have two elements here that our variants uh, of each, each other. Uh, one variant have, for each variant, then we have to argue that the element implements its requirement and the re low level requirement refines the higher level requirement. So per variant, we need to ensure that this relationship holds and also for the other variant that this relationship holds. But to complete, this, we need one more thing. And, and it's, it's the presence conditions. For each uh, 
uh, element and requirement, we attach a presence condition. Uh, and for the safety case to hold for the whole product line, it is then necessary that now for this example, that requirement R1 is present in all product variants. Uh, whenever R1 is present, R2A or R2B are present. So whenever this is present, one at least one of these must be present. And then for each of the variants, we need to make sure that the requirement is uh, the sorry for each of the elements, the presence conditions. Whenever our, the requirement is present, also the corresponding elements needs to be present. All this can be expressed in terms of presence conditions now. Uh, on the top here, we say the presence condition R1 needs to be evaluated to true. And this relationship between the presence conditions of uh, requirement R1 and the lower level requirements are to A and R to B. Uh, then we have this uh, relationship to hold that the, the first presence condition needs to entail the other presence conditions here. And the same goes for the uh, requirements on, the, on lowest level requirement compared to the presence conditions of the element. We so the, the complete safety case uh, is then complemented with the, uh, sorry, uh, the, the, the press, present conditions relationships like this. But then we have a complete safety case. We can also add this to the uh, graphical representation. This is again in GSN format. Uh, so we see the presence conditions here added, the, the, sorry, the presence condition relationships added, and these are logical formulas as we saw before, so they can be checked by, for example, theorem provers. So now the rest of my talk will discuss how can we do this for real, in reality, in, in industry and also large scale. This is what we currently try to do at Scania now. So first of all, since we, this is a very complex problem, we need to use, uh, utilize computers as far as possible. So we need to uh, reason about this information in computers. So information needs to be in, in a format that is readable to computers. This is not, the case uh, traditionally in, in Scania, and I think that's true also for many other companies, that you, much of the information is informal. It's in the Microsoft Word or Microsoft Excel documents. So we need to transform that information into structure forming in databases. And this is, uh, you can refer to this as digitalization. Uh, and this is a huge challenge for at least a, a, a company like Scania, which uh, has a lot of legacy and solutions and uh, traditions. It's, it's not only that we need to uh, represent the information in a digital format, which we call digitization. Uh, when doing this, we need to change a lot of the methods and processes also. Uh, and in order to do so, we need uh, heavy management decisions and a lot of investments. Uh, and it turns out that this is also a difficult problem and, and something that the, the competence and knowledge how to do this is not, uh, it's not sure that we, we have all this knowledge uh, internally. And uh, also lack of technology. Uh, because most uh, solutions th cannot scale up to the level of, uh, of the size of a company like Scania. Uh, 
I don't know, I have some problem here with the title. Do you see the title of this uh, slide? Yes, you see tool yes. chain oh, architecture. Okay, I don't see it. I have some problem here. No. Okay, I, I think I know what the title is anyway. So, so uh, to solve this uh, uh, digitalization of our information, we we have investigated different solutions, and uh, uh, we think that uh, to use so-called linked data is, is the most suitable approach for us. Sometimes people call this uh, semantic web also. So the idea is that we connect our tools in our tool chain in architecture and use the technology of linked data. Uh, every, so here you see a couple of our tools. And to each uh, tool, we, we need to build a linked data adapter uh, whose purpose is to expose the information in the tool to the environment outside the tool in a very standardized format. Uh, and then the information is uh, presented in a, we call it linked data information layer. Uh, and the framework and standards for this are linked data, uh, and OSLC, these are standards from W3C and OASIS organizations. And I want to emphasize that this is an information layer. It's not a place where you, we store information. Uh, and the idea is here that we ab abstract away the information from the internal data in the tools uh, to the extent that the tools are not uh, aware of each other. They are only aware of what information they present to the uh, environment and what information is available to them also in the environment here. Very important part of this is also the semantics. Uh, in order to do information and data integration, we need to know that, that every data is interpreted in the in a same way, common way. So to have a well-defined semantics of data is important. And we do that uh, by creating so-called linked data schemas. When this is available, we can uh, read the information uh, in a tool. We call it assurance case generator, and then uh, generate product line assurance cases. And uh, there is a lot of information you can read up upon uh, what linked data is, but in short, it's it's about creating a graph where URIs are connected, and and the URIs are supposed to represent any kind of things, any object that we want to reason about. Uh, so this is an example. We we have a Scania user function, which is has a title and an identifier. It's connected to use cases and so on. This is an example of information that is represented in this linked data layer. Uh, uh, an overview of our solution platform to generate the assurance case is the following. We have the assurance case tool and uh, this is a tool that we have uh, built ourselves. It's we call it TrueCase, and we build it on the Eclipse platform. Uh, we we also have another tool that we have built. Uh, it's also Eclipse, and it's called Eclipse Leo. The purpose of this tool is to create schemas, linked data schemas, which are used by the adapters. So we can control centrally the information that is exposed by each of the tools to the linked data layer. Uh, the assurance case tool is also contains an information model, which is completely synchronized with the schemas here. And use this to reason about the data coming from linked data layer. Uh, we also have a usage of uh, queries and then we use a standard uh, sparkle endpoint sparkle is a query language for linked data 
Uh, I talked about the linked data schemas and adapters. Uh, so this is a central part. As I said, for each tool, we have a linked data adapter. Uh, each tool has at least one. Yeah, it can have several, but at least one linked data adapter. And each linked data adapter has one linked data schema. And that's what you see to the right here. It's very close to a uh, standard UML class diagram. And it defines hard syntactic constraints on the data. Uh, for example, which attributes are allowed for instances of each class and which classes and subclasses are allowed at all. Uh, so the whole idea of this is to have a very, as I showed you on this slide, very controlled way of how this, these tools expose their information to the, uh, its environment. Uh, then the assurance case generator, which we call the true case, is constructed uh, as follows. It contains a number of components like this. We see here true case in, in together with the linked data schema editor Eclipse Leo, as I explained in the last slide. Uh, one core component here is the, the textual model editor. Here is where we create the information model representing uh, all the classes of information we want to reason about. Uh, we also define the assurance case structure here, uh, assurance case patterns and definition of different types of claims, like what do we mean by a safe vehicle? What do we mean by sufficient amount of testing? Uh, these are claims that can appear in a safety case and its meaning then is, is defined in, in this part of the tool. And it's a textual uh, model editor. Another core part is the assurance case builder that takes the assurance case structure, the patterns and the claim ties, and essentiates this by help of the, the linked data that is uh, coming from the, the Sparkle uh, queries. And then we are able to check if and set up the, the individual claim instances and evidence and check if they are valid. We present the result in the form of dashboard for dynamic tracking of status, but also we are able to generate PDF documents for archiving here of the safety case. Uh, there is some more parts here. The, the model comes, it's a, big and complex, we, there is a need to check the correctness and consistency of the model. So we have a, a component here for model verification. Uh, there is, a, in addition to the textual uh, model viewer and editor, we can view the models uh, graphically in, in diagrams. So we have that component here. We, this component, data quality check component, checks that the data presented by the different tools through the linked data editors is actually correct with respect to the information models uh, uh, that are built. Uh, when analyzing the claim and evidences, we, we use sometimes the theorem provers, for example, to check the entailment of the presence conditions relations. Uh, this is a screenshot of uh, how it looks like when you build information models in, in true case. See it's a um, textual version of a class diagram and there is a lot of GUI support here for uh, online uh, live checking of, of uh, the model itself. And as I said, there is also a possibility to view the model graphically and also actually to edit some parts of the model graphically. Uh, and uh, 
the language that is used to create these models is we call that RSCL. It's a language that we have created. And it's a multi level uh, information modeling language. And our aim here is to support usage in any company. And, and uh, therefore, we, we have divided the, the concept support division of the model in different layers. You can see here we have one layer focusing on the method where we define very basic things, uh, classes of components, specification, contracts, and uh, variability model, and so on. Uh, these are supposed to be general, not specific to Scania, but when you go to a company like Scania, you need more things, like you need to define what is a vehicle, what is a user function, what is an ECU. So this is a separate layer. And if you apply this to another company, for example, a medical company, I, I'm sure you don't want to reason about vehicles. Uh, so you probably need to redo this layer. Uh, but you can keep, maybe you can keep the, the first layer. However, if you, this doesn't fit, you can also add new uh, basic uh, classes for your method and you can modify the ones. So it's, it's a very general uh, approach. Uh, and as I said, the, the aim is so, to support uh, usage for all kinds of domains. So far, we have been able to use this in, a, in not in the scale of the whole Scania vehicle, but only in smaller cases. This is an electropneumatic brake system. It contains uh, electronics, software, and mechanical parts. But, and it's one of what is our smaller systems in, in uh, Scania vehicle. But still, it has so several hundreds of variants. Uh, the tool for this case managed to generate a safe case. And all, even though the, this system is one of the smaller ones, the safety case becomes huge. Uh, it is presented in, in a module, modular way with a modular structure, this picture of, of the modules the safety case contains. And as I said, this is generated automatically. And if you go into one of the modules, you see a safety case fragment. Also, this is generated uh, uh, by the tool. So actually now, I come to the conclusions. So my, the context I have uh, talked about in this talk uh, is industries with mass production and mass customization. And in particular, I have in mind Scania with our 10 raised to 65 number of variants per year. Uh, and also it's important that there is an interest to or that the, there are critical properties that needs to be sure, uh, like safety and cybersecurity. If you don't have such critical properties, it's, it's not. I'm not convinced that it's worth doing all these things. But uh, when you have critical properties, uh, uh, then it's important that that you need uh, you need some way to assure that these critical properties hold. Mm, I have argued for that. In addition to assurance cases for individual products, we need also assurance cases for product lines, since we need to be able to detect invalid insurance cases very early during, or as early as possible during development, and not when we are about to produce the products. Uh, and uh, our experience now, from work, after working with this for some years, it is possible to do this, but we need a high degree of uh, digitalization and the source case need to be generated by computerized algorithms. And the cornerstone in, stones in our proposed solutions are, as I have um, presented, we rely on a correct requirements breakdown. And this is not easy. This is in itself a, a topic to discuss. But, uh, it's, it's uh, something that we uh, assume we have. Uh, and then we use this as 
the structure of how to build the assurance case. Uh, I have explained that we, to get the assurance case for product lines, we need to add the entailment of presence conditions to the requirements relations, like refinement and implementation. We need to add them as arguments in the assurance case. Uh, very important in the digitization is the cross tool data integration. And we have solved this by using the linked data approach with common information models. And, and the uh, central part in our solution is the true case tool that we are developing. It's a textual, it contains a textual language for information modeling and insurance case structure definition. Uses Sparkle queries and theorem prover for an analysis of claim and evidence validity, and it the ultimate goal is to generate product line insurance cases. And as I said, we we aim to do this to, to create this so it's applicable to also other companies. Uh, and the, the means for that is our multi-leveling information modeling approach with separate layers for methods and company specific definitions. And uh, we plan to release this open source uh, uh, next year. Lastly, if you want to read more about the things I've talked about, we have written uh, uh, papers. This is also published papers in different conferences and journals. And so you can read about much more details by looking up these papers. So that was uh, my uh, presentation. Thank you.